short period of time where an event happened, and I think of it as a fight. And so I wanted, I could have come forward, Chris, flanked with attorneys, maybe famous attorneys who represented yeah. women who uh, suffered sexual violence. I could have, um, you know, spoken to a press conference, which would have been a horrible thing. But I wanted to control my own story. I wanted to get it down on paper. Sabrina! I gave it out, and I I think that is a good way for women to proceed. You know, I was thinking about what you Sabrina. Said. What you wanted to say it was not anything like romance, anything like what we think of as sex, positively uh, enjoyable. I'd say in that sense, it was like you didn't you didn't want it to seem like Dominic Franken in in, in, in Fountainhead, where she's <laughs> raped by the guy, and, and and said, "Oh, this is great." Remember that oh, scene that I so, ran wrote? Uh, it, it's in it's it's in blazoned on my brain um yeah it's well here's the, the lead up to the scene was very flirtatious delightful we were bantering back and forth we were telling jokes i was delighted that i well, you know had run into donald trump and he had asked for my advice about buying a present and uh, chris to me it was funny it was, it was a funny scene that we would end up in the lingerie department. To me, yeah. it was just getting better and better, and I was going to have a great story to dine out on, and it was going to be, you know... And okay, then, I get it. I watched that. I, let me ask you about Fifth Avenue. This press has given us two evidence to why to believe your story, besides the fact that I believe you. Ready? I Ready? Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Come on, bring the ball back. Good girl. Come on. Sabrina! It's unbelievable. I, I haven't thought of that. That's exactly right. And, it's, you know, I basically was shot in that dressing room. He basically shot me. Sabrina! Sabrina! I've never um, uh, been with another man. Yeah, I read and that's that. been 25 years. So he shot something in me, even though I jumped back up and my chin is up and I've been smiling and I've certainly moved on. Sabrina! He did shoot. He did Sabrina! Kill something in me. Sabrina! Thank you. Sabrina! You are, you, are, you are a survivor and a great person, and I'm glad you told this story because as someone of your intellect and media connections and sophistication, and a savvy is the right word. If someone like you doesn't come out, what about the, the really the little person who has no connections, no hope, exactly. no knowledge of how to exactly. deal with this? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. You are great. You are a great person. And I, I remember the glory days. Ah. The Americans talking. What, what a wild time. And those crazy shows ah. we had. Anyway. Oh, my thank God. You. Thank you so much, E.J. and Carol, for coming on. Up next, what the Democratic candidates told me moments after stepping off that debate stage last night. Sabrina! Come on! commercial free. Exclusively on TuneIn Premium. Here's an update you may have missed from Deadline White House. Busing in Brooklyn or Boston or Berkeley, where she was from, was a traumatic experience because we were going to the neighborhood where we were called names and all of that. That's what she was raising that we lived. He is used to the generation of Southern born civil rights leaders where you could pray liberal when you visited down south, but don't send your kid to my school when I get home. And that's what that was so reminding, reminiscent of last night when he said that. It's so painful. Like when I sat with him last Saturday on my show in South Carolina and said, don't you understand when you talk about boy and sit up last night when he said that? It's so painful. Like when I sat with him last Saturday on my show in South Carolina and said, don't you understand when you talk about boy and son? They would never call me son because they don't see me as a part of their family. Boy, when you raise that, is what they call not only me, my daddy, my granddaddy. We were never able to be a man. I understand it, but he wouldn't apologize. And all he had to do was deal with the pain he caused. All of us have, have said things we shouldn't say. But when you don't feel like you're going to apologize, when you act like that's a bridge too far, we're going to play politics with people's real pain, that's when you end up in a situation that you ended up with last night. And I think Kamala Harris... I'm not endorsing anybody, but I think she really talked about the pain because a lot of us had to get on those northern buses and face hostility every day. Great. 
So I, I want to give her some, some more credit, which is, you know, when I when I was watching last night, I thought to myself that line uh, from The Wire, that people, the famous line that people use a lot, which is, when you come from the king, you best, you best not miss. And she didn't miss. She went for, for oh, Biden, and she went in. And the way that she did it was so masterful, was so surgical. And she, what she did was she used something that's incredibly important to him, which is his 40-year record. And then she leaned in on an 